Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Amiga Game Programming Series. Before we begin, I'd like to do a shout out to Thomas Koch for kindly allowing me to use his Amiga 1000 rendering in my videos. He's also done many more fantastic renderings of other retro computers and equipment. Check links in the description below. Last time we set up starter project and initialized Git repository. But the game is just a grey screen right now. So today we'll do the first step into getting something nicer on screen. Draw graphics for background. As for programming itself, I'll also draw on PC. While you can use any drawing program, I wanted to use one with more direct support for 2D game graphics. After briefly checking Tiled, I ultimately settled with Promotion NG for my graphics needs. It not only supports rendering tiled backgrounds, but also has great support for sprites and animations. As graphics is directly dependent on Amiga capabilities and limitations, this would probably be a good point to discuss those. First of all, I want to keep the game compatible with original OCS Amigas, so basically all models, starting with Amiga 1000, 500, 2000 and so on. As all later models are backwards compatible, this would also be a typical decision back in the day. We'll use low resolution mode of 320 by 256 pixels, which supports up to 32 simultaneous colors out of palette of 4096. Of these, 16 will be used for background and 16 for sprites. But for now that's enough. We'll discuss big planes and colors in depth in future episodes. As for graphics itself, we'll use Deep Forest Tileset. I purchased it as part of Pixel Art Offer on Humble Bundle a while ago, but it's still available for sale by itself. It suits the needs for this game, looks great, and it's already using 16 colors, which is exactly the target we're aiming for. In case you're not familiar with tiles, it's technique frequently used for designing levels in games. The screen is horizontally and vertically divided into squares called tiles. It's basically the same concept as tiles we use to cover floors in our homes. I guess that's where the name comes from. All possible tiles are pre-rendered and they form the set we can use to construct the background. In lack of more resourceful name, we'll just call it simply tileset. So, when designing levels, we no longer have to think in screen pixels but instead compose them from tiles. We typically refer to tiles by their index in tileset. We can even assign different game-specific attributes to particular tiles. So some may be treated as floor that will prevent player to fall through, and some may damage the player when touched. The main advantage of this technique is greatly reduced memory footprint of levels. But it's also faster to design them this way, and we don't need an artist to compose them. The same technique is actually still used today in modern 3D games. Even with all advances, memory can still be at premium, I guess. Our tiles are 16 by 16 pixels. This means our screen is divided into... Um, well, let's do a quick calculation. My algebra skills can be, let's call it, creative sometimes. Aha! 20 tiles horizontally and 15 vertically. This leaves 16 pixels hacked for score and status displayed during game. Note, this fills PAL screens where resolution is 320 times 256. NTSC Amigas use lower resolution of 320 times 200. If we'd want to keep the game universal, we'd need to use lower resolution mode and fill the bottom part with black. It's how games were typically designed back in the day. But that's fine for this project. If really needed, we can come back and change it later on. ProMotion gives us several options when creating new tiles project. Let's go through some of them. First of all, the type is Tile, and it's for OCS Amigas. So first two settings are fine as they are. Next thing, we need to specify tile size, which is 16 by 16 pixels. Canvas settings define the size of the level. 
As calculated previously, we need 20 tiles horizontally and 15 vertically. We'll only render single map for now, so let's leave map setting at 1. Color section is very important, as discussed earlier. Promotion has this neat option to take colors from current project. As we previously opened tiles bitmap, this will conveniently copy exact palette we need for the project. The rest of the options doesn't matter for us, as Amiga doesn't have transparency per se. Now our project is set up, we can start rendering tiles. But as we already have them, we can instead import our existing file. Promotion doesn't constrain you into any workflow, you can simultaneously draw tiles and design level as you go. But for us, all that remains is to render the background. This is interesting, but it will take a while, so let's fast forward and enjoy. Ok, let's pause for a moment. I want to have trees in the background, partially covered behind front tiles. We could create new tiles with all combinations we need, but that would substantially increase tile set size. Not only that, it may change simple tiles definitions into unmanageable mess quite soon. There are simply too many combinations. Instead, we'll use multiple layers. This means on Amiga side we'll have to render them in multiple passes, from background to foreground, ensuring we don't drop pixels that represent transparency. At this point I'm not sure how exactly this will be achieved, perhaps we can tell it which color should be treated as transparent or create additional tileset mask image. But I am quite confident we can get something working. As a backup plan, if nothing else works, we can just save generated map as full screen image and render that. We're done! It's time to export the tiles and the level. There are a couple formats promotion supports. For the moment I'll use text mode which we can simply copy into our source file. As you can see each layer is exported into its own file. Each position is simply the index of the tile in tileset image. And Promotion even exported tileset image mask for us, so we're ready if we need it. Unfortunately Promotion always exports IFF images with all 256 colors. Even though Source only uses 16. We have to delete extra colors. As I don't know of any program which could do this on desktop, we'll have to do it on Amiga. 
There are a couple variants. My preferred one is Personal Paint. It can open PNG files directly and convert to IFF format, which we need for second step. Converting to format we can use more directly in our code. But at this occasion I opted to go the old way, with Deluxe Paint. It's been a while since I used it, so wanted to give it a try. And also present different ways of achieving the same goal for you at the same time. Hmm, the Lux Paint did convert to 16 color image, but it also changed color order. This is fine for background, but it will not work for sprites where colors need to match exactly. We could read IFF file directly in our code, but it's much simpler to use IFF converter to save it into format more suitable for direct consumption. We export as raw blitter data first and then as colors for copper list commands. Note there are a couple alternatives for conversion as well. I tend to alternate between GFX master and IFF converter. Don't really have strong preference for either. And no worries, we'll discuss both plus raw blitter data format and copper list in details in upcoming episodes. But for today, that's it. Next time, we're back to coding. We'll start writing code for rendering our tiles. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>